Welcome back to the last part in this edition of World Insight. Now, for our final couple of minutes together this week, we're going to take you over to Europe. Locals in the Italian city of Venice were planning a funeral on Saturday. Not a real funeral, but a coffin representing Venice would travel along the Grand Canal, then be carried ashore and left outside their town hall. They hope this will symbolize and highlight the seriousness of their plight. Venice, of course, is on the verge of becoming just a museum for tourists. Its population is dropping off, and rising water levels have also been a major cause of concern. There is now an impassioned debate on whether the World Heritage Site's dwindling number of residents can really withstand the onslaught of mass tourism. Waterways, bridges, gondolas, carnivals. Venice is like no other city. But the Queen of the Adriatic is in danger of losing her soul. Venetians have been concerned about the declining population for decades. It stood at more than 145,000 in 1960. Now it has fallen to an all-time low, less than 60,000. Many are afraid Venice could be a veritable ghost city within 40 years. The city is a victim of its own success as a tourist destination. It draws about 20 million visitors a year. Most days there are now more tourists than locals. And it's an expensive place to live. Maintaining a house that is old and constantly damp, as well as buying food that has to be brought in by boat, is not cheap. And that's driving many away. The cost of things in Venice is very high, but what is more significant is the cost of everyday life. Daily life is within reach of most people. The problem is that when two young people marry here, they have to leave. They cannot afford to leave in Venice. The irony is that Venice was built as a safe homeland. Attila the Hun invaded northern Italy in 452 AD, raising the great Roman city of Aquileia and causing its population to flee to the small islands in the lagoon. Venice became an important trading port. More than 400 bridges over its 150 canals connect 117 bodies of land. In a way, Venice has always been in peril in as much as the early settlers came to Venice because it was such a um, bad location in the middle of the marshes surrounded by swarms of mosquitoes. It was the only way they could be sure that the invading barbarians wouldn't come after them. So ever since the city was founded, it's, it's been in this delicate state of not exactly equilibrium but balance between land and water. The visitors may be vital for the local economy, but they have led to an increase in traffic on the waterways and damage to infrastructure. So it's changed quite a bit because traditionally in Venice one moved around with boats, with oars, with the gondolas or boats of that type. And so from the 20th century on when we've had to deal with uh, motor boats, it's changed the, the condition of the foundations. But it's also something very difficult to limit because Venice now as a modern city needs to have motor boats and you need to have the vaporettos, the public transportation and the private water taxis. Constant maintenance is needed to dredge the canals and reinforce building foundations that are constantly being worn down by water, waves and pollution. To cope with the increased traffic, Mirrors been installed along the walls, and in the Grand Canal, the city has posted electronic speed detectors. But the balance of water and the city has already been broken. Global warming means the sea level is rising. Venice is sinking. It's actually a much more insidious and long-term problem, which is that the whole of northeast Italy, where Venice is, is tipping very gradually downwards. And Venice has been going down, subsiding, uh, by about eight centimeters a century over the centuries. Now that was fine, except that um, the ancestors built the palaces here and the ordinary houses on stone bases and with quite a large margin um, to protect the brickwork from the water, stone of course being less porous than brick. 
it is reaching the edge of the, 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 the stone base now and the water needs to lap against the brickwork, which is why the houses are all desperately damp. While the city continues to sink, the level of the Adriatic Sea is rising and high tides are becoming more frequent. Water rose to its highest in more than 20 years last December. Over 20% of the historic center is underwater. In some parts, workers were unable to install the raised wooden walkways used during flooding because the water rose too high and too quickly under heavy rains. For the tourist, this is quite fun, but I can only imagine what it's like for the Venetians. Most locals are unwilling to buy a home that may not be usable in the future. The Italian government is trying to change the situation with an ambitious project aimed at easing the flooding. The eight-year project started in 2003 and costs about three and a half billion euros. Hinged barriers will be erected on the seabed just off Venice and will be raised when high tides threaten. But some environmental groups say the barriers would turn the lagoon into a stagnant pond. Venice is also considering restricting the number of visitors by banning day trippers. The challenge is that the ways to get the locals to stay could risk driving away many of the tourists. But if the population continues to fall as the waters rise, the real loss could be that no Venetians would be left to try to save their magical city from disappearing forever. As dawn breaks, the gondolas bob up and down in the ebb and flow of the tide. For now, at least, all is quiet. But soon, the tourists begin to arrive, and the great Venice traffic jam begins. It's a great photograph, but what else can we say? Venice is a living museum that struggles to survive in this modern age. The future one of the most famous cities in our world is now under threat. It's a cultural heritage for our entire global family, but what's a city without its people? With that, we come to the end of this program. Our email address is worldinsight at cctv.com, and that's where you can send your messages with your feedback, your comments, and your suggestions. We'll read that all on the last three stories you've been watching in our 30 minutes together. I'm James Chow in Beijing. Of course, we'll be back at the same time next week, so enjoy the week ahead, and thanks for watching. We'll see you again.